The new SPX Grid Lookup Control is a fantastic control that combines the best of a combo box and a grid view. Now, if you take a look at one of the previous examples, I show you how to take the SPX Grid View and data bind it as well as set up this multiple selection feature. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to customize the grid lookups data rows. Now, we're going to start with this simple grid lookup that is data bound to the employees table in the Northwind database. Now here, we're just showing a couple of fields, but there's a lot of other fields that I'd like to display, and maybe even customize how that data row looks. Well, the templates feature of ASP.NET lets us do that, and we've exposed several templates in the ASPX grid lookup to allow you to do that. So first, let's take a look at our data source here. I have access data source, and I can see that there's a lot of other information that I could be displaying, including a picture of the employee. So let's go ahead and customize this. So I'll go to the design view and I'll click on the grid lookups smart tag and I'll click on edit templates. Now immediately you can see all the available templates that you have. So we have everything from the button template to the individual columns inside of the grid lookup. Now I want to customize the data row so I'll click on the data row and here I'm going to insert a couple of tables. I'll start with a one row two column table and I'll click OK. Now in this left side I'm going to use the ASPX binary image which you can find in DX DX 10.2 common controls category. I'll double click on the binary image while I'm in that first cell. Now I can select edit data bindings and bind it. Now here I can bind it to the photo field. Now I want to be sure that the bindable property is set to value so that the alternate text should not be bound but instead the value field should be bound to photo. Now I'll click OK. Now on the right side here I'm going to actually embed another table. So I'm going to click insert. Now you can do this with divs as well but for the interest of time I'm just going to use this table editor here. Now I'm going to select two rows and I have about three columns. So I'll click OK. Now let's see what fields are available to us so that we can insert in here. So if we go back to our data source we'll see that we have everything from employee ID, last name, first name. So let's include Besides just a picture, we'll include their employee ID, last name, and first name in the first three columns, and then birthday, city, region in the last columns, because we've already included photo. Now, if we take a look here, that on the HTML source side, the templates has created for us. Now, we have free range here to put in whatever we want, HTML-wise, in the data row template, and we have binding capabilities as well. So, let's go back to the design view here, and here I'm going to use ASPX labels. So, I'm going to bind this which under the DX 10.2 common controls category, I'll double click on XPX label. Now, I'll just copy this, and I'm gonna paste it inside of the other cells here as well, because I'll be using this multiple times. Now, let's just go ahead and do the data bindings. Now, I'll set this text property to employee ID. Click OK. Then I'll set the next one to first name click OK, set this to last name, I'll set this to date of birth, click edit, I'll set it to birth date, and I'm going to set the format to a short date string so that we get a proper looking date. Now finally I'll bind these to city and region. Now let's take a quick look at this in action. Now, if we take a look at our dropdown again, we'll see that we have a customized item template. And we have all the information that we've chosen. Now, I can further customize this by maybe sending some lines between them or maybe even separating some of the items a little bit further between them. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of reduce the size of these images. So let's set a width and height property for that ASPX binary image. I'll click on the ASPX binary image, go to the property setting here, and we'll set the height and width to 100 pixels. Now, we can further customize this because we know we have a lot of space between the top and the bottom. So, let's move out some of these fields so that we have an extra row in between them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put employee ID by itself at the top. Now, if we take a look at our design again, and we'll go back to 
the templates and take a look at the data row again. Ah, we can see that I've separated out the top, but I haven't properly declared those table values. So let's make sure we go ahead and correct that. Now, because each row has at least two columns, we have to specify that we intend to put two columns in there. Now, actually, we have three columns in the last row, two in this one. So what we can do is actually move one of the columns. So let's do that. I'll move the region field up to the employee ID, and that way we'll have a balance and we won't have to use call span. Now let's take a quick look at this in action. Now when I click this drop down, I get much ma better manageable image sizes as well as I have three rows of two columns each. Now another great feature of the item templates is regardless of how you display them, the grid lookup will still work with this incremental searching. So for example, if I put in Nancy here and wait a couple seconds, you'll see that it'll go and find that value regardless of how the item template looks. Thanks for watching.